Hi guys, if it's Tuesday, it's Down and Dirty Woodcraft. Stay with me. Okay, today guys, we're going to talk about heating a tent or heating our sleeping area during the winter months. Okay? Now, ideally, what would be the best would be able to have a heat source within our tent that generates a significant amount of heat that has a long enough duration of that heat that we can then have a feasible sleep period where I'm not waking up every 10 minutes having to restoke some. So a little bitty firebox this big is never going to last because it does not have enough fuel to do it. So let's take a look first at a stove. Okay, we have a stove, and that stove right here with its legs like that, and its pipe going up like that, and here is our door that comes open. That stove is a given size, okay? And anything that we'd be carrying to camp, either by a vehicle, or on a mule, or on a canoe, or something like that, is going to be roughly something this size, or roughly something that big. Now, what it needs is a steady supply of fuel. Now, there's an old surplus U.S. military stove from the 1950s that I had one for many years called a Yukon stove. That the pipes went inside of it and the legs folded up and it's kind of like a three a three dog stove sometimes called a day and those are very effective stoves but their limiting factor is the inside of it how big now the best thing to do is here along the bottom put a layer of sand I want to protect that bottom and as that fire is sitting there in that bottom and it's creating the heat of course it also produces other things like lye and stuff like that that comes out of hardwood ashes and eventually it wears out the bottom of our stove so you put a layer of sand in there to protect that then above that you need an air gap normally a grill or something in here so that air can come in through the vent holes turn and go to go out so we have our fuel in here it needs a constant airflow in to feed the oxygen requirements of the fire and then to flow out okay as the smoke some of them will have a dampener up here and that allows you to cut back on how fast it's going out and you're not burning your fuel quite as fast okay but the option to gain here is we need it to be elevated we need it to be insulated from the rest of the tent so that we do not cause a fire and we need it so that our fuel wood is small stuff long enough that it will fit in there but leave like an inch on either end so it's got a little room to go forward and back you don't want to have to wedge it in there and close the door and it be up tight some wood will actually expand when it starts burning and you don't want it to bow your door out or whatever so leave like an inch too short okay now how long will such a stove burn packed packed properly a couple hours it'll give you heat hour and a half, two hours, something like that, depending on the wood, how fast it burns, and etc. And you get into the flow of it a little bit where you're going to mix dry wood and a little bit of green wood because that green wood is going to take time to dry out and burn. So it will keep it going longer. You're adding longevity to your cooking, I mean to your stove. And this is going to generate a lot of heat, and it's going to heat up a great size of a tent or something like that and that is a great way to do it but it's big and it's bulky and it's awkward to carry a lot of times it's a lot of work and you're not going to put this into some ultralight little tent it's going to, have to be a substantial tent so this is a base camp type heating source okay now stepping down one okay i want to create a place where i have a fire in a shelter that i create so right here, I'm going to create my fire. And the type of fire I'm going to build is going to be a Siberian log fire, where the fire is right here off this edge and these coals. Right here is going to be 
my sleeping area and here is going to be the shelter itself. The object of this is that the heat with flames, I'm trying to keep flames going, projects heat farther than coals does. So we want it to project the heat over to me in my sleeping area. I want the shelter behind me to also reflect heat back and to keep any heat loss from this side because that heat's got to go behind me. Otherwise, this half of me is warm and this half of me is freezing. So I need some sort of reflective heat going on right there from a shelter. And this can be true of a tarp. This can be true of a, brie, a debris hut. This can be true of whatever. But I need the fire to focus the heat toward me. Now with a Siberian log fire, and I've talked about these in the past, and you go look up pictures on how to build one, it's very simple, but it's kind of elevated and it produces more flame, and that projects heat onto me, and I can add fuel to the fire simply by shoving the logs a little further up. That takes wholly no effort. Just go around there and shove all the logs up, throw a few more pieces on top, and lay back down. I'll get 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what wood sources I'm used, before I have to wake up, okay? This can be used with modern tarps and etc., as well as other type shelter systems. But this works well in the winter, at least in my experience. But what if I don't have that? What if I've been caught out and all I've got is my haversack? And I've got a poncho, a small little U.S. Army poncho size, which is actually smaller than that one wind. And I've got a nylon hammock. I don't have anything I can cuddle up next to a fire with, do I? Now I've got to get really creative because now I have to produce a heat envelope with no shelter, so to speak. And this is how I'm going to do it. Here is the first tree. Here's the second tree. Here's my ridge line. Here is my hammock with me in it. About four feet or five feet out on this side I am going to build a Siberian log fire four or five feet out to this side I'm going to build a Siberian log fire on both sides of me they will both project heat on both sides of me I have no shelter two fires on either side of me Yes, it's going to require twice the firewood, twice the effort. If I have sufficient firewood, but I don't have a shelter, and I can build two fires, I can sit in the middle. Instead of building one gigantic bonfire that one side is burning up and one side is freezing, I build a fire on both sides of me. Now, both sides are projecting heat toward me on both sides. Make sense? There is no cold spot because of the heat. And if I time it right where this fire and this fire are not burning at the same time, so to speak, meaning that this one's gonna run out of fuel before this one does, I wake up and I add fuel to this one and I get another hour, hour and a half before I have to get up and add fuel to this one. I might even get three hours because I get this one going good and this one is overloaded this one burns its cycle and it starts to go down a little bit. This one is now coming into its own and it's producing plenty of heat and there's still some heat coming from that side, see? So it's like the pendulum of most of my heat's coming from the left, most of my heat's coming from the right. I have done this and it might be three or four hours before I had to actually get up and go and you know slide the logs in and fluff it back up again. Next. If I can't do that, how about I heat up a rock? Now, rocks are dangerous to heat. Let me say that again. Rocks may have cracks in them where water has got down into the rock. Once you heat it to the point X, the water inside turns to steam and the rock explodes. You just have to take a guess on whether or not this rock is high and dry or not, where it's got this water in it. You don't want to use any kind of sandstone or whatever. You're looking for granite and those types of hard rock that have very few cracks in it and not in a water source. Don't take anything within 50 so yards of water. 
make sure it's a excuse me high and dry rocks okay ideally what I would like to do would be this I would like to have dig out a pit above it I'd like to put a big rock and then right here because that's ground level right here I'll prop it up somehow and I'll build my fire underneath it this is a heat reflector to reflect heat back toward me but this rock also heats up and as that slab begins to heat up and get hotter and hotter it radiates heat back so that fire dropping down I'm still getting heat from the rock all right I'm getting cold I got to fire my my fire back up now the fire's going down but the rock heat's coming back up you see what I'm saying you're penciling it like a seesaw you got to stoke it up store those calories store those BTUs of energy into a source and then radiate it back out this can also be done if I'm in a, what's called a rock house and that's simply like a shallow cave of solid and I build a fire here and let that heat radiate up and the smoke go out I want to sleep here with a heat reflector behind me now that heat is being projected to me and captured and projected back and the smoke is going up as it's doing so it's heating this surface so as the fire dies down, the heat radiates out of that surface. Again, this is not without danger. Water content, again, that rock can split off. It's just gotta be a judgment call when you're standing there. If you think it's gonna work or not, you really just gotta you know, take the gamble and figure out whether or not this is worth your risk or not, okay? Now, and finally, they're the one that everybody talks about because of the movie Jeremiah Johnson, and that's a coal bed. And what you're going to do is you're going to generate a long fire, lots of small stuff, twigs, pine straw, pine cones, small stuff. Keep that fire going, and you're going to let it burn for hours and hours. I recommend at least six hours. What you're doing is you're heating the ground. Okay? So now, ground level, we have our coal bed right here that we've been having fire on for six or seven hours. Now this ground is hot. So now I let the fire go out and I bury it in three to six inches of dirt that I had taken out of the hole. I then lay down on it. It's going to be too hot when you lay down. You're going to not want a whole lot of cover over you. You don't want to waller around. You want to pack this dirt down as you get on it. You actually get up there and stomp it. Because if you don't, what happens when you lay down here is your hip will start kind of wallering a hole and you get down to the hot coals. Your shoulder will wall down and get down to the hot coals. So therefore, you want to pack that dirt very tightly. Okay? Now that's just a couple of ways to stay warm in the winter with the fires and etc. My number one preferred fire to use is either a long fire as my ancestors called it or Siberian log fire in the winter if I'm gonna be camping and I've got to sleep out you know if I'm not gonna have any kind of protection there's not a lot of wind and all I've got is a tarp I don't build a fire on either side of me yeah that's a lot of work yes sir it is but camping in the winter is work it's not so much joy and you know rainbows it's work it can be very rewarding you're going to have to work at it. And I'm going to pick my campsite to have as much available firewood to begin with. Third, heating up rocks if they're available. By heating it up, I'm storing that thermal energy for later use. So that pendulum curve of I generate the fire, the fire builds up, I'm getting good heat, good heat, good heat, and it drops off until I wake up cold. And I got cinders. 
Now I got to start from scratch. I got to build it back up. If I got two fires and I alternate the starting point, I may reap the reward of this one going down, but this one flaring up. And so I get three or four hours before I got to wake up. Or if I don't do it right, or it's just the weather conditions or the fuel source, they're both up and down every 30, 40 minutes, and you're just constantly having to stoke a fire, okay? It's very much an experience thing where you've got to see how it does. And it only, you only get that being out there and being cold and learning. Um, there's been a lot of times I've woke up cold knowing I got to get up and stoke up that fire. And you lay there going, what time is it? How much longer is it till sun up? Do I have to get up and get cold? You know, that's gonna be just something you gotta deal with. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. Until next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.